franktalks.com. Welcome to Frank Talks People of the Week segment. I'm Zoltan King. This week's Person of the Week is Gary Johnson. When you get to Gary Johnson's apartment, you're taken aback by the yellow sign beside the door indicating the use of oxygen tanks inside. Due to past brushes with the creator, Johnson is bound to a motorized buggy to get around and always has a portable oxygen mask just in case. Johnson, however, is anything but under the weather and a vibrant soul with stories to tell. He's worked with some of our culture's legendary performing artists. His trip began as a 20-year-old when a friend would introduce him to a completely different kind of life. A life, Johnson says, was quite a ride. I had a friend who uh, who worked for the Dick Clark Tours. The Dick Clark Tours where they took those rock and roll acts, put them all on two buses, and the buses left town and went on a road for like 36 weeks to 40 weeks. I had 40 days uh, traveling for one show a night, and uh, that was quite an uh, adventure for a little for a 20 year old. When you had all these names, Clyde McFadder, uh, who was the original singer with the with the Drifters, uh, the Drifters. Uh, so we had, then we had Benny King, and a lot of black acts, a lot of white acts like uh, uh, Bobby Sherman. And this is back, these are 60s people who you probably see with these big reviews that PBS has been doing every year. So we traveled like that. And with the lights, we'd just go one night tour, and then you'd be off for about two weeks somewhere and then go back on a tour with a whole bunch of new acts. So that was all right. And, but as we were traveling, I got to know Sam Cooke very well. So he was a big singer. and. Uh, so I got to road manage him for about, uh, I guess, what a year, year and a half, and uh, he happened to get shot. Happened to get shot? In the motel. <laughs> uh, How did that happen? Well, uh, let's say he was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person. Then, uh, uh, Chubby Checker, who I got along very well with, he's become a very dear friend of mine over these many years, uh, he asked me if I wanted to go out with him, so I went out with Chubby and stayed working for him for about almost six, seven years. Well, I went to the Chubby, it was about to 1965, 1966, and then right after that it was Wayne Cochran. After that it was less uh, Esther Phillips, who since has passed away. And uh, I tried to do a little group here with Jeff Brown, for, and I came back to the city at that point. I uh, ran into a nice little band here in the city, which was playing at the Escar Show Bar, which, Another place I'm sure is another story, Montreal, in its uh, heyday of the 1760s, late 60s, early 70s, the Escar Schober was a haven for rhythm and blues acts. And you saw everybody and every, anybody there. See, that, would, that took me to about uh, 1969. At the age of 50, Johnson did something inimaginable to lots of people around him. He went back to school. I asked him what brought about this dramatic decision. I was dissatisfied with my life. It's time, you know, I was complaining, going around here, go play. And my wife says, get the hell out, go sign up, look at this, the paper, look at this, why don't you go take it? And I said, why not? So it was actually your wife's idea to take some classes? Yeah, yeah. she'd been after me for 20 years. She told me, you're smarter than we all, you're smarter than, we, than you think you are, you know? Damn right, you know, she was, she was right, I was a fool. So, I mean, so, you know, I mean, I, uh, I previously farted my life and just, you know, I was really a vagabond. I went to Dawson for a year and I caught up, took some classes and caught up to, to go to, I wrote the letter and got accepted into Concordia in their communications and was there about two years. But I had two strokes, so I had, I really couldn't walk fast enough or keep up up and down stairs all day long or even walking down the hall to the elevator was a big mm-hmm. problem for me. So I, I just couldn't keep up. At the time, this you had to kind of change your lifestyle a bit again because you had to become a student once more. Well, that was a little bit more difficult about doing papers and stuff like that. 
That was probably more difficult for me. How come? Well, writing the paper, I write the paper of my life. You know, I, got, I mean, it took a lot of a lot of work just to, write, to learn how to write a paper and learn how to write some stuff and put your thoughts on paper. It was, you know, so that was a big learning curve there. And then I went to... But I was always interested in the movies. I was always interested in the making of movies. Not so much being an actor, but the making of movies always fascinated me. So when I learned some of these things, and I watch movies now, I know how it's done. The 65-year-old Johnson is very humble about the contributions he's made to society to the point where he thinks he hasn't made any. He did, however, want to share with others his reverence for the members of the medical, educational, and clergy sectors, saying that these are people who contribute and leave something behind, so we should all show them much more respect. This was Frank Talk's People of the Week segment. I'm Zoltan King. Be well. From Loser to Seducer is the story of Frank B. Kerman. This book marks the triumph of a nice guy over most of his inner demons. This includes going from being a loser to managing five lovers at the same time, his first Valentine's Day with two women at the same time, and getting back the one that got away. Want to learn how you can change your life? Buy this book at franktalks.com.